Good morning. Thank you, Griffin. Uh, thanks to all our uh, upper school leaders. Welcome to our alums and families and friends thereof. Um, I hope that that was a, a brief little window into life in the upper school and life on campus. I heard from several of you uh, who had a ch uh, chance to connect to over in uh, the dining hall and the morning early theater and on the way in. Um, so many quick observations. Oh my gosh, the place has changed so much since I've been here. Or this, even, even the gym, it looks different. So thank you for being here. Thanks for experiencing that with us and experiencing kind of what's happening in real time with our upper school. Many of the things you just witnessed um, or heard about, and by the way, hopefully you'll stick around this weekend and enjoy, um, are new. Uh, not just new this year, like Spring Fling, um, but new to members of the community, including me. Uh, this is the first normal spring that uh, I and, and Meredith and our children and our family have had at Shipley. Um, and so my theme today, my, my, my one short task here is transition. I'm gonna hand things over to Neil Virgino, um, president of our alumni uh, association in a minute, uh, who will introduce our award winners. Um, so that's my real task is transition, but I wanted to visit on that word just for a minute. Um, this transition that we are all living in and through and with um, transitioning and, and figuring out norms, right? Do I shake hands? Is it a fist bump? Are we bowing? I don't know what we're doing. Um, can I go? Is it okay? Should I wear a mask? Should I bring my parents? I'm not sure. We're all living through that. Um, but doing it together helps, right? And being in a community where you share experiences and interests, um, Chick-fil-A, um, that helps. Um, and, and the purpose of today is manyfold, right? Uh, in this season of spring and transition, the purpose of today is to give voice to and give space to uh, what's really beginning in earnest here on campus, which is for our seniors, the beginning of a transition from student to alum, right? And for their families, from the parents of an alum, or parents of a student to the parents of an alum. For, our, for the teachers, right, who've spent, you know, one or four or 12 or 14 years with these students, right, to see them go on into the world and, and do all the great things that we're going to hear about our alums doing. So I would ask everybody to kind of hold that space for transition today, right, whether it's your own personal transition, the one you and your family or friends are going through, um, or the ones we're going to hear about today and, and the wonderful things that can come from transition, right? Even though it can be scary, should I go to the ninth grade dance? Is anybody going to go? Should I, like, go, right? Lean into that. Have the courage to do it. Do it with grace, right? Lean into the motto. But don't run from transition. Embrace it, right? And know that you're not alone in those transitions, and amazing things can happen from it. So if, as you lean into that, right, and as you listen tonight or uh, today to, to these amazing stories that you're going to hear a little bit about, all right, celebrate that. Enjoy it, and I hope that you have a wonderful spring. Uh, of transition. So with that, I'm delighted to welcome uh, and invite, uh, oh, wait, sorry, I have one more task. I have almost, thanks uh, for somebody waving in the back. Um, one thing this weekend we're going to do uh, tomorrow uh, at our alumni uh, gathering, which uh, our alumni tea, which we're do where we're honoring Ms. Van Steenwick. Um, our older students will remember Ms. Van Steenwick, uh, our former uh, head of upper school. Um, we're, ho we're holding a tea, and what we're going to do at the tea, which we're um, we'll give Ms. Van Steenwerk her chair and honor her. We're also going to welcome our on honorary alumni. Um, so for the last three years, um, we haven't been able to do this <clears throat> in, a, in a real way. So we're going to, we're going to, as in many cases, we're going to transition uh, back to normal, and we're going to honor three classes worth of uh, honorary alumni. So with that, I just want to uh, share with you just who those folks are. They'll all be on, uh, many of them will be on campus tomorrow. Uh, but I just want to take a moment here and recognize them. So we have three classes: the class of 2020, 2021, and 2022, um, who I'll who I'll mention um, a handful of their friends, uh, and in cases a few of them are here, but we'll honor them formally tomorrow. But I just want to give voice to them. So from the class of 2020, Margie Katz, who was a longtime uh, member of the, of the board and parent. We have Margie, there she is. Uh, Marion Roche, who was a longtime teacher here, a beloved teacher for, uh, beginning in 1996, uh, did a wonderful job in our lower school. And Patty Walker, uh, who began in 1999, a, a, another beloved lower school teacher. So a round of applause for the class of 2020. <laughs> In the class of 21, 
some familiar faces here. Miss L in the lower school. Who remembers Mrs. L from the lower school library? Right. Congratulations, though. If you see her, please congratulate her. Betsy Lashinsky, our um, phenomenal lower school librarian. Susan Riley, who retired la at the end of last year. Um, wonderful third grade teacher who was here from, uh, uh, retired last year and began in 2001. Sylvia Spector, who I think held just about every position on campus, uh, from parent to co-chair to volunteer to admissions, um, and joined the school formally in 2000 and also retired last year. And Rachel Welch, uh, who joined uh, the school right after she graduated college in 2000. And if you've ever touched a piece of data from the Shipley School, she was responsible for it. She basically built the entire back end uh, beginning in 2000. So a, a remarkable uh, individual who, who uh, moved on to um, basically the person who supplies all of our data. So the class of 2021, give them a round of applause. And then finally this year, the class of 22, um, Mr. Amadon, our senior grade dean. Who, a man who needs no introduction, joined the school in 2001, and this year will be graduating with his senior class. So he has served as a grade dean for many years, so we thought it appropriate for him to graduate that position. He's not leaving. You can't get away from us, Mr. Amdon, but graduating with his class and being honored. Um, Cheryl Dorham, who was, again, a longtime parent here, served the board uh, exceptionally well uh, for many, many years um, and filled just about every volunteer position on the campus. Uh, Ms. Grossman, who remembers Ms. Grossman from lower school, lower school nurse. Um, Ms. Grossman, I'm not sure if everybody, the students know this, Ms. Grossman is retiring at the end of this year. Um, if anybody on campus has earned it, it's the lower school nurse over the last two years. Um, so Ms. Grossman is looking forward to retirement, joined here in 1995. Um, Sue Mannix, um, our assistant head of school for community engagement. We're going to wave at you. There she is. Thank you, Sue. Um, Sue has been indispensable. Um, <laughs> in so many ways since 2011, joining the school formally. She was assistant at community, uh, communications and development, uh, or excuse me, marketing, assistant head for strategic initiatives, and for the last 25 months has been at my right side through the, the pandemic. I think actually we've been joined at the hip. So Sue, many thanks for all of your work. Congratulations. And, And John Robeson. Many people know John. Uh, his self-proclaimed his self uh, note of fame is the number one basketball school in the history of Shipley basketball. Uh, Mr. Robeson was fantastic. He retired in December um, from our physical plant department uh, as a beloved member of the community and a constant fixture at basketball games. So congratulations to the class of 2022. <laughs> So with that, I am delighted to welcome to the stage uh, Neil Regino uh, and our four award winners. Uh, please come on up. <clears throat> Mr. Regino will uh, introduce our four uh, award winners, but I just wanted to take a moment and thank him personally. Um, first as an alum of the member of class of uh, 2003, uh, then as a, uh, as, a, a, as a graduate, then as a proud alum, and more recently as the president of the Alumni Council um, and a member of our board of trustees, Mr. Regino has been a constant voice uh, for uh, doing the difficult task of holding on to traditions at the school while pushing us forward on any number of issues. He chairs the, he chairs the assets committee and is, is our treasurer at the board um, and has been a, a stalwart partner and leader in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I just want to thank you, Neil, for all your work there. Congratulations for that, and thanks for being here. Everybody, Neil Regina. Mine's going to be a little short here. Um, First of all, to continue on the theme of transition, everybody here who's going to transition out of Shipley, you're always part of this community, and you're always going to be an alumni once you leave here. And what we do with the Alumni Council is we have representation all the way back to the 1950s. There's 25 members. We make sure that the alumni's voices are heard when it comes to the school. Um, so it's a group of volunteers that work really hard. Uh, so. Part of our job is to recognize our alumni that have achieved some outstanding achievements and have really done a lot uh, in their field or in volunteerism or um, just in general have made a big impact on the world. 
the people who actually go through the thousands of alumni and figure out which ones uh, are deserving of this, and, and there's a lot of them, so it's really difficult to come down with these uh, members every single year, uh, is at the, the awards committee. And the person who chairs our awards committee is Robert Douglas, who uh, graduated a few years before I did. And uh, everybody who knows in my meetings and who sees me speak, I'm a very efficient person, and with that, I'm actually gonna allow Rob, who did most of the work, to present the awards. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think we're gonna get right to it. Um, uh, as Neil said, we have an exceptional group of alumni um, award recipients this year. I'm exceptionally excited. Um, to have you all on stage, so welcome and thank you um, for being here. Uh, our first award recipient is Molly Cyphers Berry. She's the class of 02. Um, she's receiving the Young Alumni Award. Uh, the Shipley School Young Alumni Award recognizes a student alumna or alumnus who was graduated within the preceding 20 years and demonstrates innovation, curiosity, creativity in the pursuit of excellence in a particular field, whether it be a profession through formal volunteer activities unrelated to the school or through a personal commitment to an issue, project, or cause. As a Shipley senior, Molly Cyphers Berry, 02, was awarded the Class of 1944 Bowl given to a student who represents the highest standard of citizenship in the class. She continued her commitment to excellence at Colgate University, where she majored in art history with a minor in film and media studies. Molly started her career at Sotheby's Auction House just down the road from Shipley in the company's Haverford office. At the age of 20, she had just finished her sophomore year of Colgate University and thought it would be an interesting way to spend the summer of 2004. 18 years later, Molly is Vice President, Director of Service Operations for Sotheby's Worldwide Headquarters in New York City, where she is responsible for the client experience in the galleries and auction rooms that span Sotheby's 10-story building. In her role, Molly has con also contributed to Sotheby's work for the Red Organization, founded by U2's Bono, to organize three charity auctions, raising nearly $100 million to fight the AIDS epidemic and setting artists' records at auction along the way. In recognition of Molly's diligent pursuit of excellence, the Alumni Council has named her this year's recipient of the Young Alumni Award. <laughs> Wow, thank you. It is truly an honor to be back here with all of you today, 20 years after my graduation. In some ways, it feels like a lifetime ago, but in other ways, it feels like just yesterday. I was speaking to my classmates at a Monday morning assembly or jumping on the crew bus for after school practice down at Boathouse Row. I am deeply touched that Chipley has recognized me for this Young Alumni Award. I entered Shipley as a sophomore after my family moved, from the main moved to the main line from the Chicago area. Let me be clear, my early days at Shipley were far from easy. In addition to being the new girl in school, I struggled to adjust to the academic rigor Shipley demanded. I love to tell the story that after being a straight A student at my former school, my first two graded tests at Shipley were D's. You heard me right, D's. It was modern European and geometry, if I recall. Um, so I was not quite prepared for such a rude awakening. But even more so, I was humbled by the tremendous support and encouragement displayed by my Shipley teachers. They truly believed in me, and that changed everything. Many office hours later, I emerged a stronger, more confident version of myself. I found my voice in the classroom and in my writing abilities. I was brave enough to take up new sports, like volleyball and crew, and I even tried out for the spring musical that year. By my senior year, I was on student council as SOS chair, I was a varsity athlete, and I sang a cappella with the Madrigals. Most importantly, I made lifelong friends at Shipley who have been with me through thick and thin over the years. 
There's no doubt that my Shipley years were some of the best preparation I could have had for my professional endeavors. At Sotheby's, the bar is set high. The clientele is sophisticated and discerning. The artwork we handle is within the canon of art history. And the events offered demand flawless execution. Like my early days at Shipley, my career has not always been easy. I have navigated difficult bosses and demanding CEOs, a financial crisis which resulted in cutting staff and resources, and an evolving art market that's confronting change, disruptive technology, and new business models and customers. But I've met the challenges presented by bringing energy and humility to the table, calm and order to chaos, vision and clarity to the unknown, and in true Shipley spirit, courage for the deed and grace for the doing. The Shipley motto continues to be an anchor for me professionally and personally. I want to quickly circle back to the Shipley teachers and community for a moment. When I reflect on those early days at Shipley, I don't remember being scared I wasn't going to make friends or find my place in the school. I remember teachers like Mrs. Wampler, Mr. Rangham, Mrs. Jaffe, and Mr. Bavarian rooting for me, encouraging me to keep going. And I can literally close my eyes and see them sitting there in the front row cheering me on. A few years later, I was lucky enough to find some of the same connections with my college advisor at Colgate, and then again with my first boss who offered me that job at Sotheby's 18 years ago. <clears throat> so I ask you all, who is in your front row? Take stock of those people who challenge and support you no matter what. Visualize them sitting there. The people in those seats are there for you. And there will be others you haven't even met yet who one day will grab a seat to cheer you on through thick and thin. So thank you, Shipley, for being there for me 20 plus years ago and for being here for me today through the recognition of this award. And a special thank you to my parents who supported my Shipley education, my brother and fellow alum, my husband and our two daughters, all of whom I am lucky enough to have with me here today. Thank you so very much. So I do have to ask, was that Mr. Rangham's class, Modern European? Yes, it was. Yeah, that was a really hard class. <laughs> I think we were in it together. Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> um, sorry, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> the Alumni Service Award uh, is presented for outstanding volunteer service to the Shipley School by an alumna or an alumnus as demonstrated by strong loyalty, exceptional contributions of time and effort, and personal commitment to the advancement of the school's mission. I will note that recipients of this award are usually over 70. Um, it really speaks to the, the, the incredible, um, incredible commitment that Hawk has already shown to the school that um, I think you're probably the youngest service award <laughs> recipient ever. That's amazing. Um, Hawk Coles graduated from Shipley in 2007 and went on to the University of Pittsburgh where he earned a bachelor's degree in history. Hawk has worked in higher education for almost eight years at Penco Tech, a trade school with locations in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. He is currently the director of education for the Bristol PA campus where as the youngest and only black administrator, he supervises the teaching and learning experience for dozens of faculty members and over 400 students. Outside of work, Hawk divides his time between family and volunteer service as an active member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. At Shipley, he is a member of the governing body of the Black Alumni Association, which he helped found in 2020. In addition, he is leading fundraising efforts to establish a named endowed fund which will support experiences aimed at educating students about American history and culture through the lens of African American contributions. In recognition of Hawk's steadfast commitment to helping Shipley create a fully culturally sustaining and inclusive environment, the Alumni Council has named him this year's recipient of the Alumni Service Award. Good morning, everybody. Okay, uh, first and foremost, 
I'd like, I would like to thank Shipley for recognizing me uh, for my service to the school in the form of this award. Uh, it means a lot to me to be in front of all of you right now because over the past year, this was not the result that I imagined at all. Um, I think that the support that I've received from the Shipley community over the last year has been fantastic and it has made it easy for me to stay committed to the work that will continue to be done uh, on this campus as time goes on. Uh, as a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity since fall of 2008, I'm no stranger to service uh, for others and trying to do my part in being a change maker in my community. Our motto is culture for service and service for humanity. I am, uh, excuse me. Uh, that is something that was instilled in me well before I arrived on the University of Pittsburgh's campus in 2007. I've always been a firm believer of, in helping people and getting, getting by, or excuse me, getting joy from seeing them accomplish the goals that they set forth for themselves. I stand in front of you all today as I'm still striving to accomplish a goal that the Black Alumni Association began uh, working towards over a year ago. That goal is establishing an endowed fund on this campus that will help provide educational opportunities for the entire campus about the black community as well. I'm still speechless on, the, on how welcoming the Shipley community has been towards this initiative. Current and former uh, Shipley teachers and parents have donated to this cause and without their help, we would not be able to say that we've raised over $56,000 uh, towards this goal of 100,000. Uh, my former classmates and fellow alumni, spanning all the way back to the class of 19, in the 1960s, have banded together with me and shown me immense support uh, towards this initiative as well. That is really what Shipley is all about and why I think this is such an amazing school. Uh, whether these 118 individuals know me personally or not, they supported our initiative and I'm forever indebted to them. These experiences have, have validated the people, or excuse me, that people believe in the work that we are trying to accomplish on the same campus that's changed all of our lives. We are all fortunate to have walked these halls at some point in our life, and I think this is truly important to stay involved in any way possible to enhance the Shipley experience for all. Uh, the school has produced some of America's finest in their respective fields, and that will never change. Go Gators. The Distinguished Alumni Award recognizes the outstanding achievement, the dedication, and the personal accomplishments of a Shipley alumna in a particular field or endeavor of endeavor, whether it be in a chosen profession, through volunteer activities unrelated to the school, or through a personal commitment to an issue, project, or cause. After graduating from Shipley in 1962, Kathleen Ritter Crampton, known by her classmates as Choo Choo, is it Choo Choo? Shoo Shoo. I wondered about that. Sorry, earned a BA in American Studies from Boston University. She then took a job at the Martha Elliott Health Center, which served an economically disadvantaged population in Jamaica Plain, an inner suburb of Boston, and spent the next 47 years working to improve the US healthcare system in executive legal roles at Boston's Children's Hospital, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Harvard Pilgrim, Kaiser Permanente, and most recently, United Healthcare of Florida Community Plan one of the largest providers of managed care services to the Medicaid population in Florida. Since retiring from the healthcare industry, Kathleen has focused on civic engagement, serving as the chair of the League of Women's Voters of Florida's National Popular Vote Initiative, co-founding Floridians for the National Popular Vote, which she currently chairs, and serving as a director of the Palm Beach Civic Association. She is also an active member member of a number of boards, including New World Angels, a Florida-focused angel investment group, and the WCD Foundation, which supports women on corporate boards. Please um, join me in congratulating um, Kathleen Ritter Crampton. Let me start by saying things were quite different 60 years ago. Um, first, I want to thank Michael Turner and Ali Schwartz, as well as Terry Sawyer Strauss, who's not with us here, my great friend, for this wonderful honor. 
Shipley gave us amazing role models who demonstrated character and intellect. I am most grateful to those teachers who were ahead of their time. But let's go back to 60 years ago, and I was sitting out where you are, clear that I would never get an award from the Shipley School. If the class of 62 had voted for one of those most likely to succeed, I would not have received one vote. Life seemed bleak. My date for the senior prom had bailed at the last minute. I flunked the chemistry final exam and would not uh, graduate without retaking it. The fact that half the class flunked was not an excuse, as my father pointed out. And third, I had applied to three colleges and had been rejected by all of them. My father was not amused by that either. It was not a pretty picture. But gentlemen come and go. I passed the chem exam and graduated, and Shipley flew literally into action. And within a week, I'd been accepted at Boston University, which turned out to be a great school for me. Amid this bleak scenario, however, three pivotal things happened. First, I had managed the very successful school Halloween event, which was noted on my report card with, quote, Kathleen has administrative talents. My father was thrilled. I had no idea what administrative talents were. <laughs> Second, our history of art teacher, Miss Boland, for those of you old enough to remember, gave me a book of Renoir paintings as her private commendation, recognizing my achievements in that class. That small gesture meant the world to me. Teachers, take note. And third, I was accepted into the experiment in international living in their summer program in Bruges, Belgium, where I polished my French, which gave me a college major, and a rooming assignment, which was even more important, in BU's elegant French house, which overlooked the Charles River. My message today is not for those of you who are at the top of your class, have gotten into the best schools, played varsity ball, written a symphony, or solved world hunger. It's for those of you, like me, who played on the fourth hockey team, had a mediocre academic record, and didn't get invited to any of the boys' school dances. Life is long, and there are lots of opportunities for success. Figure out what you are good at, and then maximize your God-given talents. Engage in life. It is more fun to be out on the playing field than sitting in the stands. And if you just keep getting up to bat, eventually you'll figure out how to hit the ball. And last but not least, carry Shipley's motto with you. Courage for the deed and grace for the doing. Wise words for those of you listening. You will all thrive at college, since Shipley prepared you well, as it did for the class of 62. It is amazing that I am sitting here today, or standing, given where I was when I left 60 years ago. And I really mean it. Take your experiences, and look at these two, and I know the third one over there. <laughs> Guys, I love it when, when someone says, T do something you haven't done before. Give it a try. I can only want to give you the list of mistakes I made. But honestly, when it's all said and done, it's pretty amazing. So my thanks to Shipley, to my classmates who are here today, and God bless you all, and thank you.
<laughs> I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to read your, your, your citation after that. <laughs> the Margaret Bailey Spear Award is given to a graduate who has shown courage for the deed and grace for the doing, whose deeds have helped to make the community stronger and freer, who has in some way helped to lessen prejudice, intolerance, and injustice, or whose accomplishments, political, artistic, literary, or scientific, bring credit to her and also to the Shipley School. After graduating from Shipley in 1977 as one of the school's first African-American students, Linda Powell Solomon earned her medical degree from American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine and a certificate of teaching in higher education from Montgomery County Community College. She is currently professor and chair of biology at Community College of Philadelphia. For the past 25 years, in addition to guiding instruction and biology course offerings, Linda has supported the efforts of countless underrepresented minority students working towards a bachelor's degree in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics through the National Science Foundation's Greater Philadelphia Region Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation Program. She has received awards from the Christian R. and Mary F. Lindbach Foundation, the Community College of Philadelphia and Drexel University chapters of the National Society of Black Engineers, the Greater Philadelphia Region Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation, and Philadelphia City Council. Linda has also served in a variety of volunteer roles, including as first vice chair of Greater Philadelphia's Health Actions Board of Directors and on Shipley's Alumni Council, where she was co-chair of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. In recognition of her work to blaze the trail and support minority students in their pursuit of careers in science, to make these fields more accessible and equitable, it is the great honor of the Alumni Council to name her the recipient of this year's Margaret Bailey Spear Award. Thank you. How do I, how do, wh how do I follow that? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I want to thank Michael Turner and the Alumni Council for considering me worthy of such a wonderful award. Under the leadership of Neil Regina, the Alumni Council has made great strides in improvement of alumni engagement with the Shipley community. Shipley provided me with an excellent foundation for the educational areas I needed for future success. It took me a while to figure out how I learn best. That wasn't always in alignment with the deadlines. For me, it came down to the prep before a course starts and then staying ahead of the course, not behind. I also had to tackle what I knew I never learned. Biology depends on physics, math, and chemistry. The pace of how quickly a course moves does not mean that my accountability to myself about a subject can end if the understanding is needed for future work. So yes, there were many times when a course was over and I knew I didn't understand it. I went back on my own terms and kept until I understood what I needed to understand. For example, I was always a fast reader, but as I moved forward with my education, I realized I needed to slow down my reading. I had been scanning the pages, not reading every word. As the density of the subject matter increased, I had to slow down and spend a lot more time placing the context of each sentence into the larger concept. As a department head and grant administrator, building activities and systems for STEM students to address their learning has been part of my life's work. In the context of paid and volunteer roles, I still study. I supervise a large number of young PhDs 
coming out in all different areas of science. Science means that you study for the duration. They change every day. I have been lucky to find spaces where my gifts, talents, and interests have aligned with moving the populations I serve toward a better life. In my role as a vice chair of a board for Greater Philadelphia Health Action, Inc., I work on quality oversight of the federally qualified health care operations for almost 90,000 uninsured and underinsured patients in the Philadelphia area. I like data analysis and to make sure that we meet the federal agency health care standards. And that's something I find enjoyable. Yes, I was a nerd at Shipley, and I have stayed a proud nerd. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who do not feel heard, do not feel understood, or feel like you do not fit in in life, life will get better. I spent a lot of my Shipley years in observation mode. My former classmates have told me they remember me being very quiet. However, like some of you, I had to find my path forward, irrespective of the many influences in life and irrespective of the many challenges. You will find your voice, plant your feet into what you care about and are willing to work for. I sought out mentors along the way, sometimes after a mistake, sometimes before a mistake, but always trying and working towards the greater good. My generation remembers John F. Kennedy's speech about service to your nation and community. Who is that voice for you? Again, I am humbled and honored to receive this recognition. Thank you. I think the, um, the students have some questions for you. Is that right? So we're gonna open uh, things up for questions from um, our students, but before we do that, can we just have one more round of applause for this remarkable group of people? <laughs> exactly. So I'd like to introduce Ms. Dadar, uh, Anna Dadar, who is also a proud alum and uh, our upper school dean of students. There you go. Our, and our upper, upper school dean of students who will uh, call on students who have questions. All right, great, thanks. Thank you. Okay, hi everybody. If you are interested in asking a question, please come here, line up, and then we can direct the questions to our alumni. So please come on down, and we'll get started. Hello everyone, my name is Aisha Ali and I'm a senior here at Chipley. And my question goes to either of you. What is the most valuable skill you gained from your Shipley experience? <laughs> oh, do I give them the mic? No, no, they should have them. We should, it should be up there. There we go, Griffin's hog in the mic. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, I learned to visualize. So what I mean by that was um, I would, if I had to remember dates, right, I would visualize those dates. And I actually picked that up from Ms. Boland, those of you who remember, because we did a lot with architecture in the history of art class. And so we'd have to know all of the cornices and stuff like that, and so I visualized that, and then I realized that I could use that in other places. Hugely valuable. This may seem a little unusual for some of you, but I stopped worrying about fitting in. I stopped worrying about whether people were, con whether what everybody else was doing. I made decisions to work toward my own greater good, irrespective of whether or not that's what everybody else thought. Okay, um, I'm gonna go with time management. So I, I'm born and raised in North Philadelphia, so as I 
progressed to the high school. I had to take a bus. I had to take a train. I was up at 5.30 every morning. I played sports after school, so you know that you all can recognize and relate to it that you have practice after school. So practice is over almost 5, 6 o'clock at night. You still have to take a train to get back into Philadelphia and do homework. We know that Shipley has a lot of homework. <laughs> but um, I think it prepared me for everything ahead of me because it basically forced me to dig deep because I had to utilize every minute of my day. You only get 24 hours in a day. Those are all really good skills. Time management's a big one, especially as you transition into college. Um, but I think for me, something that I, as you heard in my speech, I, I, had, to, I had to learn how to really learn. <laughs> that was the big transition for me and something that Chipley taught me how to do, how to think critically, how to express myself. Um, and those are really important skills that carry you through life. Great question. Hi, my name is Emma Portnoy and I'm a junior here at Shipley. My question is specifically for Mr. Coles. What inspired you to get involved with the Black Alumni Association and take on this leadership role? Okay, so I was a history major at Pittsburgh and I think that history provides context for everything and how we're able to move forward based on the things that have happened in the past. And this initiative, as far as uh, the Black Alumni Association and the endowment that we've been trying to raise funds for, uh, is going to provide opportunities to go to the African American History Museum, to go to the National Memorial for Peace and Justice down in Alabama, um, to potentially have uh, guest speakers to come on campus to talk about the Civil Rights Movement and things like that. But I think that it's important because when I was here, some of the trips, some of my, my favorite trips that we went on dealt with history whether that's going to New York or whether that's going to DC, I enjoyed learning about the Holocaust in general at the Holocaust Museum because that was something that I wasn't really privy to before I came to Shipley and I thought it was important to learn about things like that as well. So I think this is an opportunity to bring another type of initiative on campus because these are very enriching uh, experiences for our students on this campus and they were ex uh, perfect experiences for me as well because it kind of given, it gave me a drive for my, my basically my, my major for undergrad as well. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Hi, I'm Riley Medina and I have a question for Mrs. Barry. Um, I was gonna ask you, what about your time at Shipley inspired you to do what you do now or just after high school? So I took um, an art history class with Ms. Prendergast for those who might remember her. Um, I believe she was also in the math department, so that in and of itself was a really wonderful thing to realize, that connection between art history and, and, um, and mathematics. But that class really opened my eyes to something that I felt very passionate about, something that I could study, and I loved every minute of studying it. And I tried to when I went to Colgate, sort of put that on to the side and not be so tunnel vision about art history. And I tried all different types of subjects. And the um, wonderful thing about college is that there is there's such a, an array of what you can um, learn. But I kept coming back to the art and art history department. And at that point, I knew that that was something that I really believed in and that I loved to do. And so the transition to looking for work um, I knew that working in the art sphere, although I'm on the more business side of the art world, um, is something that I feel really um, passionate about. And I go to work every day and I see amazing things and that's inspiring for me even all these many years later. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Um, my name is Srijan and I have a question for Dr. Powell. Um, why did you choose to pursue higher education instead of practicing a doctor after getting a medical degree? I actually think I'm in the perfect place. Um, I had a great role model in my own father. Um, my father had been a surgeon in the greater Philadelphia area, but he had always been a college, 
He had always been a medical school professor in addition to a surgeon. So in fact, my older brother picked one path and he stayed in the medical field as an emergency room doc and I shifted into the professoriate. So when I came back to Philadelphia after doing um, red work in the Chicago area hospitals, I'm like, how do you, how do I make this transition? So I'm like, well, I saw the Community College of Philadelphia was looking for anatomy and physiology professors. And so I went and they're like, you want to work here? I'm like, yeah, I want to work here. And they're like, no, really, you want to work here? I'm like, yeah. And that was almost 30 years ago. So for all intents and purposes, I teach anatomy and physiology to people who want to go through medicine as well as being a federal grant administrator. So I'm in, I still use the medical knowledge in a variety of ways and build people who are going into healthcare. So I love it. Hi, my name is Sophie Shapiro. Um, and I'm in 10th grade, and my question is for any alum. Um, what was your most memorable Shipley experience? <laughs> there was a math teacher here named Mrs. Koblenz. This was a very long time ago. And she, we were going through algebra, and I was not clicking that day, wasn't clicking. And she said, I want you to stay. And I'm like, oh, the heart drops. And she's like, I know you get this, but we're not leaving until you get it. And so she and I stayed at it until I did get it. And so that has stayed with me. And I actually do some of that same thing. And yes, it drops your heart, but it ends up being one of the things most memorable about this school. I don't know if you still have to do this, but when we were seniors, we had to write a paper about an author. And we had to uh, read a number of their books and then write the definitive work on the author. Um, and I had the pleasure of writing it on Sinclair Lewis. And the reason I chose Sinclair Lewis because he was a great friend of my father's. I actually came from Minnesota and for those of you who have ever read any of his books, uh, his famous one, which is uh, Mainline, is about um, uh, Sauk Center, Minnesota. And it was the first time I had really ever gotten into an author and his books. And I was surprised that I could learn so much, that I could get into it, that I could read reviews of his books and understand what was happening. And that gave me the knowledge that I could, if you will, run down the rabbit hole and really have a great time down there? Um, I, I think it's a tie. So the first one, my senior year, uh, I played varsity soccer and we actually beat the, the ninth ranked team in the country at that point in time. It was Germantown Academy. They had a lot of good players and it was just, that whole season was just an amazing experience. I'll still stay in contact with a lot of my teammates to this day. And then I think the other experience, my senior year, we actually had our prom at the zoo. So that's a very unique experience in itself. <laughs> <laughs> so like imagine walking to your tent and you're seeing the peacocks walking down the, the aisles and things like that, but it's just something that sticks out in my mind that you don't really get a chance to do that too often. Oh, there are so many, but as I mentioned, when I was speaking with you, I, I, I remember that the heart drop feeling and putting in those office hours. And I do really remember those, those teachers who sat with me and said, you're going to get this and we're going to help you. And, um, and I learned that I could do it. It was, I, that, that's just that, that moment where I thought, you know, I, this is, it's all going to be okay, and it's going to be great. And not only is it going to be great, there's a wonderful community here to celebrate with along the way. And that's really what resonates with me when I think back on my Shipley experience. All right. Um, hi, I'm Matteo Malaboyo, and um, this question also goes just anyone willing to answer, but... If you, could have, if you could have changed anything about your experience at Chipley, what would that be? Um, do you know? Yeah. 
I would have taken more math. Um, oh, you're going to say the same thing. Um, I discovered, yeah. Um, I mean, I did. A, I did. I have Mrs. Gramley, for those of you who remember, uh, and I did adequately in math. Um, but I ended up in the School of Public Health, where you end up taking statistics, and then I went on to business school, where I majored in finance. And again, um, you know, you got to know math, um, and you got to do calculus. Uh, in order for me to get through the uh, business school, I actually hired a student to help uh, to tutor me. And honest to God, he had not been born when I graduated from uh, uh, from Shipley. So uh, it was. Uh, Take math and take a lot of it. I agree. Great. Ditto that. <laughs> well, you took the math. Yeah. I did take the math. Um, don't be afraid to speak up. People think that. Oh, it's it's always going to be easy. It's not easy. And Shipley of the 70s is, was a very different Shipley than the Shipley of today. So as I said, I was in observation mode. And I didn't say sometimes what I could have said, because that's how I dealt with a lot of things. As an internal processor, I internally process. I'm not. I became an extrovert. My people who know me now would be like, you're an introvert, they'd laugh. But speak up, say and ask and express what you feel. Because I didn't do that as much. And the person I am today is the same person, but now I speak up. Thanks for those great questions to our students. Um, and one more round of congratulations to all of our recipients. I want to thank Mr. Douglas and Mr. Regino and the entire Alumni Council for all their work uh, as our Shipley Singers come up front. A couple other thanks as we wrap up. On behalf of, uh, on behalf of our recipients and actually all the alumni present, um, as some of our recipients said, I want to thank their families and the people who made it possible for them to have a Shipley experience. Every person in this room um, was brought here uh, on a different path, but for the students in the room, there's a lot of people who've made this experience possible for you. I hope that you'll go home and thank them or turn to your left and your right uh, and thank them. This is a remarkable place, and you've seen some of the reasons why today. Um, I opened with um, the concept of transition, and I want to pivot that to kind of the opposite, which is the concept of permanence. Um, the motto that you heard just about everybody re uh, referenced today, um, some know this, some don't, is actually one year older than the school. Uh, it was written by a parent um, to that parent's children um, to, to inspire them to go on and do these kinds of things. In that case, the, the parent was Mr. Shipley, writing it to his three daughters who were about to start a school. Um, and being able to inspire young people to go off and do things is frankly what we do here all the time. And so please know that whatever transition you're experiencing, uh, wherever, wherever you are, right, whether your prom date just jumped you, uh, whether you're not sure you should speak up, you're facing the number nine team in the country, right, um, or you're trying to auction off a million dollar item. Wherever you are, um, you are part of something larger than yourself. You are not alone. Uh, and the transition that we're going through right now here today and, and, and for all of us um, reminds us of that permanence. That's been hidden for so many of us for so long. Um, and today's a great reminder of that. You're not alone. You're part of something great. And that can help you do great things. So with that, I would ask everybody to stand and join us as we celebrate that in song with our jazz band playing, and our, excuse me, with our Shipley singers. The words, if you've been, it's been a little while, alums are on the back of your program. Thank you everybody for joining us. Have a wonderful 
Alumni Weekend. 